I know you've been looking forward to this one for a long time, I've been promising it for a few months and I finally found the time to get the edit together. In last week's video I showed you all the closer shots and we also took a quick look at all the different species of doves that one can legally hunt in this part of the world. This video is going to be completely different. Our longer shots today are past the 120 yard mark so we're going to spend a little bit more time on each shot. We'll start off with some of the medium range shots before we get to the really long ones. At 66 yards you can begin to see the pellet drop quite clearly. The reason I'm not holding over here is because I've accounted for the drop by adjusting the turrets, essentially moving the crosshairs to the predicted point of impact. A one mil dot hold off for the wind and this pellet hits him right in the clockwork. I spot another bird a little bit closer and set up for the shot. Again, the bird drops straight down and that's how it should be. I would have had no excuses for a bad shot at this distance. And now we get to the really challenging shots. Ninety meters. Uh, you just got to trust your data, hey. Uh, I have a nice little app on my phone that helped me to get that shot. Uh, I know there's a five kilometer per hour wind from the left, so I just did a 1.3 mil dots holdover, and then did a 16 minute of angle vertical adjustment on my turret. Aimed dead on and absolutely smashed him. Uh, he didn't die instantly, but he he pretty much fell straight down while he was flapping, which means that I must have got him in his lungs or in his vitals and he, he would have been dead within a few seconds after being hit. So I'm very happy with that, let's go get him. Here's my first miss of the day, and I was really disappointed with this one because I almost pulled off a perfect shot. I ranged the bird at 112 meters and I cranked the turret to 24 minutes of angle to compensate for the drop. I'll hold two mil dots for the wind, and I see a few feathers float away and the bird flies off completely unharmed. The slow motion tells a better story. According to my calculations, I would need to use this as my point of aim. And you can see I'm quite shaky on the shot. I would have taken the shot right over here, but instead I pull it at the last moment when my point of aim is on the edge of his chest here. And just watch where this pellet hits. That pellet just nicks his chest and it's so frustrating because I look at the shot in slow motion and I realize that if I had pulled the trigger just a millisecond earlier, that bird would have dropped like a stone. A while later, another bird presents itself at a similar distance and this time it's not my shooting that lets me down. Again, I see a few feathers float off and when I look at the shot in slow motion, I see that I kept the crosshairs very still on the shot. However, it was my calculations that let me down this time, and my guess is that the rangefinder picked up one of the branches that were a few meters closer, and as a result, the pellet dropped a few centimeters lower than I expected. Just nicked him. Uh, I'm not sure if there's uh, there was wind from side to side or if I went over his back, but we'll have to see in the in the video. But it's a long way off. 100 and, what is it? 112 meters. But there's another bird out there on the wire, so maybe we should take him out as well. Let's go. Put this one back to zero, so that I don't forget where I was. Let's focus on that one. I'm hoping for a third time lucky here on these tricky 120 yard shots. And I'm not disappointed. I'm very, very happy. 112 meters is a long shot. It's probably one of my I think my longest shot was 124 meters or something like that on a pigeon, so this is close to my longest. This time I'm holding over instead of using the turrets. This is a 7 mil dot holdover shot, and this is one of the reasons I chose this particular scope. Most generic mil dot scopes only have 4 or 5 mil dots, so that would make a shot like this near impossible. I hold half a mil dot for the wind and I pull the trigger. There's something really special about watching a pellet fly through the air in slow motion. 
And this definitely gives me a bit of encouragement for the next shot. This is probably my favourite shot of the day. It's not as far as the previous one, but the placement is perfect. I hold 5 mil dots over and 1 mil dot for the wind. And again, you can see that pellet travel right through the trajectory and hit him right in the vitals. And the other two birds just sit there. They wouldn't even have heard the shots from that distance. They do fly off before I manage to line up on them though. Now this one was actually filmed about a month later, as you can tell by the fact that I've got a different scope fitted. The shot passes about 2 centimeters higher than I was expecting, but strikes him cleanly in the head. As I mentioned in my headshots versus heart shots video a few weeks back, the flapping that occurs after a headshot is an involuntary nerve response, the same way that a rabbit may kick around for a few seconds after a clean headshot. The last shot of the day is another really close call. Again, the shot passes slightly higher than expected, and this time a few feathers are just plucked off his neck. I'll be back for him another day. As usual, none of these birds went to waste, they were all debreasted, turned into pies, and thoroughly enjoyed. I'll be uploading three of the longer shots as separate short videos, so if you want an even more detailed explanation as to what went through my mind while taking each shot, you can check those out. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.